Well, welcome YouTube friends and family to today's edition of The Wellness Homesteader. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kim. So before we get started on today's task, I want to share with you a really neat vintage dress that I found. So I'm going to take off, if I can do this properly, take off the sweater and share with you this very lovely 1940s Tony Todd dress. So if you're wondering what's the history behind this dress and how did I come to acquire it, stay tuned. So this dress happened to have the original Tony Todd tag. So it was considered new old stock, had never been worn. Their little tagline is only the look is expensive as seen in glamour and charm. The price is still on there for $10.98. So that would have been quite pricey, even in the 50s, if this is not a 40s dress. I found this in an antique store, <laughs> haggled back and forth with the owner of the dress to get the price grace greatly reduced because she wanted 80 and I paid 60 some dollars for the dress, but it is truly one of my favorites. So I know it is a very early dress for a couple reasons. So if any of you ladies out there have any vintage clothing with the side zipper, I swear it's the devil, right? <laughs> I hate side zippers, but it does have a metal zipper. So let me show you. It has a metal zipper right here up the side. And guys, I debated on this because if it was any smaller um, through this, the middle, I absolutely could not wear it. <laughs> well, humbling to admit that, but. And you know, one of the things I failed to mention in our vintage discussion about vintage clothing and how you can date it, et cetera, et cetera, metal zippers was one thing. But I talked a lot about um, the size discrepancy and va vanity sizing. So here is one key difference between silhouettes of 40s and 50s and our silhouettes today. We got rid of one thing out of our wardrobe. Um, and no, it wasn't the bra. However, the no bra look of the 60s did change where bust lines were put into garments. How about that? No, the, the secret is we quit wearing girdles. Now, I never wore a full on girdle. I was a skinny kid. <laughs> I am a fluffy middle-aged woman now. So um, this dress is actually, I believe a size 14. Normally I would wear an 18. I have lost a little bit of weight, a little scotch. Stress will do that to me. But to, in today's world, we have things like Spanx. So usually, <laughs> and guys, I have to laugh at myself right now. I need some humor. Usually when I wear Spanx, they start out on my body and they end up in my purse because I don't like anything constricting. But in an effort not to pull on any of these seams around the waistline and damage this fabric, that is probably 80 years old. I decided that today I would wear the Spanx. They're not terribly uncomfortable. I definitely don't size down because, you know, you can squeeze yourself in, but it has to go somewhere. So it's either gonna go out the top or out the bottom. So I just try to get something that reminds me to keep my belly pulled in. So Anyway, let me tell you a little bit about Tony Todd, and then we're gonna get to today's topic, which I think you'll enjoy. Sorry, I let my iPad turn itself off. Tony Todd was not a designer. It was a name given to the Miss Dress, Mrs. Dress Division of R&M Kaufman, Inc. in Illinois. They also made the junior label, Vicki Vaughn. Both lines were inexpensive, mass-produced labels, but the quality is still nicer than the fast fashion of today. So that's what I know about my 40s or 50s dress. The material is a slubbed material. I hope the 
camera picks this up. So, and it's definitely like a rayonish material. There is no um, care tag. There is no sizing tag. And I'm going on sizing by measuring the dress against what I normally wear and what the lady I purchased it from told me. So I do think this is a 1940s. The zipper is side, it is metal. So um, the necklace I'm wearing is one of my mother's old necklaces. And the dress is kind of between a red and an orange. So I had this lovely sweater that I thrifted from my thrift doll for $1. And I thought this would make a lovely outfit for today. So today is the day that the assisted living will be going out to my mom's home. And I would just share a brief update. And again, guys, I don't wanna monopolize everything with the situation with my mom. But I also want to tell you, if I learn tips and tricks that might help you if you're faced with the same situation. So I had a doctor's appointment this week and I was, my mother and I have the same physician. I was able to share with him what has been going on. And he was under the understanding that she had a live-in caregiver, not a caregiver four hours a day. So he is highly supportive and highly concerned as I am about mom being alone 20 hours a day, even though I pop in and out and do a lot of things. So my mom is of the mindset that men know everything and doctors are akin to God's word. So when I was able to share with her, you know, Dr. Tooney and I sat down, this is what we talked about, blah, blah, blah. It has paved the road, maybe another foot or two. So perhaps guys, and, it, and it's not a, a disrespect to women thing. I think it's a, a generational and cultural belief that my mom has that I'm stupid <laughs> and men are smart. And that's okay, It does that doesn't offend me because mm, I already know I'm smart, so I'm being a little facetious. So I wanna start here. I'm gonna try to start something new. And I would like to make sure, not only that I give shout outs to channels that I enjoy, again, community above competition, and this person won't know who I am, I don't think. I also want to give shout outs to you, my subscribers, who are so kind and so faithful to watch my videos and to comment. So this morning's shout out goes to Jane across the big pond. And Jane, you, my dear, are such a delight. Your comments are so humorous and your private emails to me have really bolstered me in a time I needed it. And I am grateful for all my subscribers, but today I wanna to say I'm especially grateful for you. All right, that shout out done. Secondly, Becky over at Acre Homestead, and I will leave a link to her channel in the box below. I love watching her channel, but guys, in case you haven't figured this out, I'm like a pretty mellow, um, like I like to be busy, don't get me wrong, but I don't have the energy that Becky has and Becky is the Energizer Bunny. I mean, she does more in a video than I sometimes do in a week, right? So she was doing a video on sorting her seeds and she lives in the Pacific Northwest. I think she said zone 8B. And so she will be planting at different times than I, but she wanted to get her seeds organized. So I will drop a link in the description box below for this product. Now she purchased the one with all clear don't want to put stress on my dress. <laughs> All right. So what this is, is a photo storage box. It's plastic and it was $37 on Amazon, but okay. Operator error. I chose the colored because I could see things like yellow for corn, green for green beans, peas, 
maybe teal for herbs, blue for flowers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I liked the colored, and I do plan on labeling these. It took me 45 minutes this morning to find my labeler, but um, it was right where I remember I stored it in the appropriate place. So I have all of my seeds over here. Guys, I'm a little embarrassed for you to see my seeds, but it, it is what it is. So I have long used paper sacks when I'm harvesting seeds from my garden, my flowers to replant. So I need to make some little envelopes because I don't wanna buy them. I can make them out of paper very simply. But I thought it would be fun today to talk about how you might organize your seeds and get ready for the 2022 planting season. So let me get kind of organized here and I will bring you back and we'll get started looking at what seeds I have. Stay tuned. All right, guys. Well, I had to move <laughs> because the table wasn't big enough. So as you see before me, well, you actually can't see. Oh, short girl problems. Hold on. I took my heels off so you can't see. Okay. First thing first, I do keep a homestead management binder and I will leave a link at the very end of the video to this video of how I set it up. I realized when I pulled it out, I have a few things to add because I do need to add my generator and any other maintenance and repair work I've done this year. Oh, what I like to do is overload it so you drop things on the floor. I do love having Clyde's Garden Planner. So you can buy your zone and if you don't know what zone you're in, I'm in 6A. We have 172 growing days. And our frost-free date this year says April 23rd. Mm -mm. Sorry, I'm not gonna buy that. It's usually around Mother's Day, so somewhere between the 9th and the 15th of May. But it will tell you, based on your zone, when you can plant so and how deep to plant it. Um, it it's a really cool little planning tool so knowing that I have 176 growing days that gives me a lot of information about when I need to start seeds indoors so generally for me that is March um, I also have some graph paper that I've taped together and this is 2021 because I ended up using something different so that I can plan out my garden. So this year, guys, I'm very excited. I have had six four foot by four foot raised beds for a while. I have added an additional two four by eight foot beds. So that's gonna give me a lot more growing space and I want to plan carefully. Let me see quickly if I can find one of my, yeah, here we go. So for example, this looks like 2020. I actually draw it out. It isn't fancy guys. And any seeds that were fabulous, I will save the seed packet and write on there. Anything that was wah, 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 I will do the same. So I can go back year to year and be like, nope, those don't grow well here. So I will be working on building up a new garden plan. I don't know where my 2021 is. It's it's probably in here. But guys, I feel like Steve Martin and the jerk when he said, the new phone books are here. Yeah, Bigger Creek Seed Catalog arrived and I am so excited to start my planning. So let me set this aside. And you know, I think this is a great activity to be doing when you're having those gray winter days where we're supposed to get significant snow starting Sunday. But you know, I am in a climate, couldn't possibly have this thing a little overloaded. <laughs> I'm in an area in Ohio where we get a lot of snow. So you just find things to do indoors in that case. So what did I find in my seeds? Well, I'm gonna need to order some seeds this year. So I found some envelopes, pardon me, instead of making my own, that I bought at a thrift store. 
So I'm going to transfer from the paper sacks into the envelopes so they will then fit into these little photo holder cases. So there are three, six, 16 of them and they just snap open. And again, this was Becky's idea and you can put your seeds in there. Then I can make a label for the top of it and tell at a glance what I have, what I don't have. So let me share with you what I found. I have way too many herb seeds. I have two basils, two parsleys, um, two chamomile, a catnip, more dill than any human being needs, parsley if I didn't already say that, thyme, there's more dill, dill, sage. So I think that my sage, oregano, and thyme are going to winter over as may my um, uh, that purple flower that, okay, well, that doesn't matter. So I may be transplanting some things out and putting some more things in to start from seed. Having that cover on my veggie pod, and I will also leave a link to that in the description box, makes a big difference on when I can start seeds in the dirt outdoors, and then I can just harden them off. I also have a small cold frame, so once things start to do well, I put them in the cold frame and then crack the door and kind of harden them off. Okay, As for, I don't know how to classify some of these. I have lavender, so is that an herb? <laughs> and calendula, strawberry calendula. And I have both a new pack plus some seeds that I saved. In the flower arena, Johnny Jump Ups, poppies, pansies, some, um, these things are fabulous guys from the gardener's workshop. Um, this is coxcomb. And this one is, ah, oh, it's a sunflower. That should go with the sunflowers. Okay. I have some columbine. Oh, and there's some more lavender. And I forget what this is. This is something from my son. Rainbow Tutti Frutti Lupine. Lupine are the pokey things that come up. And they're the ones I have now are purple. But I want to try the Tutti Frutti. Um, I do have... Three packages of carrots, probably a gracious plenty. I have some tomato, some that I saved from last year, beef steak, um, some Roma, beef steak, and cherry tomatoes. I have a gracious plenty of pumpkins from um, jack-o'-lanterns all the way to chicken pie pumpkins, so I'm good there. Someone's gifted me this corn. I, it, I've had it for a couple years. I'm definitely gonna need corn. I have not grown corn before. I have only one broccoli, two cucumbers, 17,000 zucchini. <laughs> I need green beans. Both of these um, are bush blue lake beans. And I know I did not grow them last year. So these seeds are old. Not even sure if they'll sprout. I have a lot of sugar snap peas. I'm good there. I have spinach. I have lettuce, lettuce cabbage. And then I'm really low. I have only one hot pepper and then one multicolor sweet pepper. Um, this is all I have on onions, so I'll probably purchase some onion sets. These are green onions. And then more sunflowers than any person needs. So I'm going to take some time. I'm going to get these organized make my labels and I'll bring you back to show you what it looks like because maybe this is a project that you would like to take on. One of the things I would really like to start doing in 2022 is do a whole house clean out. You know, start doing some sorting, divesting myself of things that I don't need or want that I could donate or perhaps sell if, if there's value there. As I'm facing emptying out my mother's home, I'm realizing you know, we just acquire a lot of stuff. And I don't want to put, I, I'm only, well, I'm almost 61. I don't want to put my son through sorting a tremendous amount of stuff. So I am going to try to get a little better organized and I will bring you along for some of those videos to talk about how to pare down what you have and simplify your life. So let me pause you for a moment. I'll get busy here making labels and 
getting rid of all these paper sacks and I will bring you back at the end to show you my progress. Stay tuned. That was super simple, guys. I highly recommend this system. So, I have a very old school Dymo Letra tag. So first the batteries were dead after hunting for it for 45 minutes. And it allowed me to print, I think, two labels and wah, 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 I ran out of tape. So I've ordered some more, but in the meantime, Black Sharpie, my go-to. So how I've organized this, and you can really do it any way you want. The colors aren't terribly significant. I have cone flowers, sunflowers, flower flowers, soap herbs, herbs, broccoli and cucumbers, all manners of squash, tomatoes, greens, so your lettuce, your kale, your spinach, etc., cabbage, uh, tomatoes, I already said that, um, Indiana melon, carrots, pumpkins, both pie and um, jack-o'-lantern, peas, beans, onions, and peppers, and that leaves me a couple, which is where you want to be, right? Because we always want more. So while I worked on that, I began making a list. So for example, the two partial packages of green beans, which I know are at least three seasons old, pitched those. So I need green beans. I will need basil. I'm very shy on peppers. I have no, no corn to speak of. Uh, low on spinach, we'll need some onion sets. So that's just the start. And then I can peruse and I'm not affiliated in any way, guys, but I love Baker Creek seeds. They just really have a lot of great heirloom quality seeds. So I'm going to be able to shop with some intelligence and not end up with even more sunflowers. That's one of my weaknesses because I know I have a gracious plenty. My son also gave me some for Christmas. So I mu Kim must step away from the sunflowers. So drop me a comment below. Are you getting excited for gardening season? What is the number one thing that you can't wait to grow this year? And it could be a flower, container gardening, like I'm doing raised beds, or do you have an earth garden? Whatever the case may be, let me know so we can get excited together for spring. So let me kind of read this up a minute. I have a couple final thoughts I want to share with you. And then that'll be it for today's video. So stay tuned. So we just wanted to take a moment to, again, welcome all the new subscribers and say a big thank you to my returning subscribers. Your kind words, your thoughts, your prayers have meant a lot to me during this time. And it has been a very, very stressful time for me. I am trying to make sure that I am putting out quality videos for you. My speaking ability appears to have returned last few videos I've had a lot of trouble with that so that's a very good thing and, and I do feel your love and prayers and I appreciate it I don't know what tomorrow brings none of us really do so I'm trying to take everything just a day at a time but I have a feeling after this assessment I will be taking mom to visit the assisted living um, things are going to start to move fast so guys, I will always strive to keep up with the videos to the best of my ability. If I can't put something quality out for you, I don't want to waste your time, but I will at least post in the community tab, which will come across your, your news feed as you scroll through, um, I should say Facebook, YouTube. But I'm hoping that won't be the case. I'm actually a little bit ahead, and so that's really helped me out. I'm about a week ahead at this point, yeah, or close anyway. And so I'm gonna to try to stay ahead and just do what I can when I can. My videos may be a little bit shorter, but again, if I can't bring you something quality, I won't bring you a video. I will simply put a post in the community tab. 
So if you haven't already and you enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you'd go ahead and smash that like button. If you know someone who has a lot of seeds that would need to get them organized before growing season this year, please share my video. It really helps my channel and I greatly appreciate it. So as always, be healthy, be well, be blessed, and I will see you all very soon. Take care.